recording has started. Hello and welcome everyone to our second webinar with Stephen Payne. Uh, this webinar is um, looking at Minecraft education and artificial intelligence. So I'm totally fascinated to learn, learn alongside you how Stephen is going to bring these two worlds together. Um, last webinar was amazing, jam-packed with many tips and resources. So uh, we, I'm sure that this is going to be just as good. Um, I'd like to introduce Stephen. Stephen is a former maths teacher and actually a former CESAR project officer with us uh, at the University of Adelaide. And Stephen now mainly works in the My My Microsoft education team, uh, supporting staff at schools across Australia, um, looking at emerging technologies such as Minecraft for learning and teaching. So Minecraft is an education uh, suite that supports teaching and learning through a game-based interface. Um, and it really promotes creativity, collaboration and problem solving. And you'll see that through the work that Stephen shares today. Um, in this presentation, we're going to be looking at, you know, um, different e examples of Minecraft and artificial intelligence. And uh, what we'll do is at the end of the session, we'll share out the resources and tools mentioned. So you can just sit back and enjoy today, uh, soak it all in. Uh, what we'll do as well is if you have any questions, just pop them into the chat and I can curate those and ask Stephen um, later on in the session. Just before we jump in, just wanted to share um, that today I'm joining from Ghana country. So I'm joining from Adelaide. Uh, the three university campuses at the University of Adelaide are situated on Ghana country. And I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present and acknowledge all of the land um, on which you're joining from today. So if you would like to share with us where you're joining from today, um, please let us know in the chat as well. Uh, if you're interested as well, so Stephen's going to talk through some examples of artificial intelligence. If you go to our uh, Caesar MOOCs adelaide.edu.au website, you'll find there um, we've got free online courses, we have a national lending library for schools and we run a series of online professional learning uh, workshops as well as provide resources for schools. So um, check that out if you like what you're seeing today as well. So what I'll do now is I'll hand over to Stephen and we'll kick off this session. Thanks very much, Rebecca. Um, I'll just say we are just remind you that we are recording this, so you might want to um, you might want to turn your cameras off if you don't want to be in the recording. Um, but feel free to to keep them on. Um, I can't actually see the chat while we're presenting today, so I'd love it, Rebecca. Feel free to to jump in if there are any um, specific questions that are worth um, addressing straight away. But I'm just going to share my screen. Um, and we are going to head into Minecraft Education Edition and particularly um, looking at ways to use it with artificial intelligence. So I'm, what I'm going to do today is um, talk a little bit about Minecraft. I'm going to try and show Minecraft live. Uh, it was running a bit slow earlier today, so I've made a couple of videos as well. Uh, I'm going to share some resources with you. And as Rebecca said, we're going to share those as we go. Um, at the end of the, the session, you'll all be emailed the, the slides and any of the resources. Um, I'm currently um, visiting uh, New South Wales, uh, working on the land of the Cardigal people, and I'm generally based in Western Australia, the, uh, the beautiful land of the Wajuk people of the Noongar Nation, and I too pay my respect to the traditional owners of the various um, lands around this lovely country that we call Australia. So what I'm going to do in this session, as I've said, is talk about Minecraft and AI and specifically the education version of Minecraft. Um, uh, in Australia, uh, where I'm presenting from today, we have about, I think about uh, more, more than half of the schools actually have Minecraft available for students to use. It's, uh, it's one of the uh, biggest users of Minecraft in education around the world. Um, and today we're going to look at Minecraft in general. I'm going to look at coding. 
I'm going to talk about this uh, project that's been going on for about six years now called Project Malmo, um, which is an artificial intelligence program built on top of Minecraft. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of really great activities that you can get your students thinking about artificial intelligence concepts within Minecraft. Uh, so every year there's an hour of code. Um, uh, which you can actually play in Minecraft. And the one in 2019 was actually um, based on artificial intelligence and how you could use robots to uh, protect a, um, a community from a, from a forest fire. So some really uh, real world examples there. Um, I'm also going to share some curriculum documents. Uh, the Minecraft team have actually put together a whole lot of um, computing uh, materials introducing different concepts and I'll I'll show you a, some of the artificial intelligence ideas they've got there um, and show you where you can go and get those resources. There are PowerPoints, there are um, example codes and Minecraft worlds that you can pick up and use with students. And I'll mention a few other places where you can go and get um, further training and resources. So I thought I'd just shared with you this um, this short video, I think it's about a minute long, and it's the only trailer that my, that Minecraft have actually made. So um, what I think is really nice about this is um, nothing's really changed. Um, Minecraft, I think, is 12 years old now, um, and this, this uh, trailer came out about 10 years ago, um, and they haven't needed to update it. So let's just sit back and remind ourselves what Minecraft is all about. Let's go to a place where everything is made of blocks. Where the only limit is your imagination. Let's go wherever you want to go. Climb the tallest mountains. Venture down to the darkest caves. Build anything you want. Day or night, rain or shine. Because this is the most significant sandbox you'll ever set foot in. Build a majestic castle, invent a new machine, or take a ride on a roller coaster. Play with friends, build your own little community. Protect yourself with the strongest armor that you can craft, and fight off the dangers of the night. No one can tell you what you can or cannot do, with no rules to follow. This adventure, it's up to you. I think that shows really why um, why uh, Minecraft is is so um, immersive for for students. So, what does the education edition offer? Um, it doesn't take anything away. So, everything that students can do in Minecraft that they know and love, they can do that still in Minecraft Education Edition. But the Minecraft team have also built in uh, particular resources for. Um, I guess for accessibility, there's some really great sort of um, reading and writing tools. There are great assessment tools and collaborative tools that are built into this game. And they've also looked at particular curriculum areas. Um, you can pretty much teach any uh, any curriculum area via ed the education edition of Minecraft, but there's particular features for chemistry and for computer science. And of course, today we're going to look at the computer science aspects. So why are we using it in the classroom? Well, students um, are engaged. It's it's a game that many, uh, most uh, students will have used and to see it in a new way, they can take the skills they've got and they can develop collaborative skills, leadership skills, and they can inspire um, students. And particularly, I think the um, computer science aspects of um, Minecraft. Uh, if you haven't seen the things you can do in uh, Minecraft, you'll pick up some really great um, ideas today. Um, yep, so I've just really kind of shown this up to show what's particularly there for education. I think I've mentioned most of this, um, and the code builder is what we're going to use today. You can code in blocks, JavaScript, or Python, um, and there are plenty of resources to support both students and teachers. And particularly when you're starting off, you can switch between them. So you can you can code something to happen in blocks, switch over to JavaScript, change the code um, and see what happens. And hopefully if things work, we'll be able to have a look at that today. 
And I really like the collaborative aspect. So you don't need to set up a, a server. You haven't got to have lots of uh, great skills yourself as a computer scientist. You can just open up your computer, generate a code, and all your students can come and work on a problem themselves, whether it's redesigning the school, whether it's solving the problem of, um, of deforestation or whatever it might be, you can really um, explore different worlds within the education edition of Minecraft. So today we're going to look at um, coding in Minecraft and particularly the code builder. So I just wonder if anyone knows this little character hiding underneath here is, is your secret to coding in Minecraft. So Rebecca's going to shout out if anyone knows who's hiding. Please write it in the chat if you know. It's my, it's my favourite little friend. Uh, Doc? Agent? Agent! Ag people saying agent. <laughs> that is it. Perfect. And I've got my... I can't see my camera, but can you see that? Yes, we can see it. <laughs> so I, I carry my agent plush with me. Uh, is my lucky charm. So yeah, the agent is um, how you can do coding within Minecraft. Um, and you just press C if you're using a, a Mac or a PC. You just press C on your keyboard and your agent appears and you can start coding um, with your agent. Um, I normally say that the agent takes the gender of the of the person playing. So my agent's going to be a he, yours might be whatever you um, are playing as. Um, and then if you're on a touch screen, um, like an iPad, you can just press, there's a little agent button at the top of the screen. Um, I'll show you that later. And that will also summon the agent. And then you can start building the agent. So there's a lot of um, uh, event-based commands. So things like on start, say hi. That's a simple little bit of block code that when the game starts, the agent will say hi to you. Or um, on chat command, build. And you can start placing blocks or... As a player walks, he's going to spawn an animal five blocks in the sky. So I could walk along and every step I take, a bat just appears above my uh, head. So you can make some really sort of cool little uh, animations out of that. And even things like teleporting. So there's so many great little commands. So you can press a button and be teleported somewhere. If you, um, you could answer a question and if you get it right, you get into a nice um, place. And if you get it wrong, you go back into a... Uh, not so nice place. There's all sorts of really cool things that you can do. So um, coding is all about telling the computer to do something and make code um, that I've written there is actually the um, the, the language that we're, we're using here. It's a block based kind of um, interface and you can use blocks and you can also use JavaScript or Python. I think the majority of the, the Minecraft resources that are are published for teachers are written in Python. So if that's your language, there are loads of resources for you to pick up and start using. So let's see how it works. Um, so a really simple example here, I think it's the first thing I ever coded, was some really simple code that allowed, um, I did this earlier to, today, so I'm just gonna show you this. So I just wrote some really simple code. I press C, I go to Microsoft Make Code, um, and I can start coding um, straight away. There's a whole lot of ready-made tutorials um, and examples if you want to go and go straight in and make uh, something amazing, or you can just start from scratch. So I'm just, uh, and this one, I just want things to occur as I walk around. So I try to think of the simplest thing that I could code. So you've got these little drawers on the left and you can bring out different items so here I'm saying on player walk, chuck the others out of the way. And as I walk, I want to place a block down. And you've got all sorts of different blocks in Minecraft from, um, from blocks of gold to lava to pumpkins. And there we go, I'm gonna choose a dandelion. So as I, um, as I walk around, oh, there's a chicken. As I walk around, I'm just leaving a trail of dandelions in my in my wake. There we go. I've left a trail of dandelions. So I might do this with young students and I might get them to try and write their name out um, in flowers or in 
well, students will normally choose something like fire, but that's that's quite exciting. But you can also change this. So you might add another another block and place uh, two rows of flowers or whatever it might be. So that's a really simple example that you can start with. Um, the agent is where you can really do some exciting things and students love the agent because the agent allows you to um, to do things while you're doing other things. So you might be looking around for a nice place to build and you can send your agent off to look for gold or to chop down trees for wood and things like that. So your agent is kind of a really little great little helper. And the great thing about the agent is the agent does what he's told. So he's only as good as your programming. If you if you write a good program, he will do it exactly. If you run a poor program, you've got to go and and check it out. So here's my little agent. Oh, um, just a, we have a question. Yes. Uh, is this also compatible with an iPad version? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything uh, everything I'm showing now can be done on a an iPad, a Mac, a PC, or a Chromebook. Yeah. Oh, great. And we've just broken your view, so we're just getting a view of yourself instead of your Minecraft. No worries. Did that happen just now? I'm going to go back and share um, my screen in again. Yeah. I might just turn my camera off for now just to make it uh, a little bit faster, and I'm going to share my screen in. There we go. Um, and I'll show you in a moment what that looks like on a um, on an iPad. So you can see I've written some code here. Um, you won't be able to see that. So I've written on chat command run, agent place on move true, and then he's going to move forward five times, turn left, repeat that four times, and then move forward again by one. So the reason I've written agent place on move true is so that as he's moving around, he's also placing a block. If I didn't have that, um, that block there, he would just walk in a square and it wouldn't be that interesting. But I've actually, I think, coded him so that he's going to draw a or make a, a square foundation um, as I go through this. Let's see if it works. So I just type in the command run. And he's going to walk. Repeat four times. Go forward five. And the reason I had another four go forward one at the end was so that it would close off the gap. So I've just written a simple little uh, code like that. And I've done this with students of different um, age groups. And I uh, said uh, I've shown this and then I've asked them to improve on this and make a make him uh, build a tower 10 stories high with a base five by five. So then they look at putting in um, nested uh, loops and things like that. So you can do some really cool things there. Um, we're going to go back and look at the agent in a moment, but I can't do a presentation on Minecraft without talking about making it rain chickens. Um, this is uh, this is one of my favorite activities, really simple to do. And then the students go and get very inspired. So just within the, the game, you can actually spawn animals. So this code here, when I type in the word chicken, it's going to repeat this command 100 times, and that is spawn a chicken at 0, 010. 0. So I could do that, but I'm just going to very quickly show you what happens when you um, switch from the blocks to a text based language. So I can choose another animal, an ocelot or a donkey or a wolf. Uh, and I can decide where that's going to spawn, but I can also switch to Python and I can read the code there. So what students realize is that after they've been doing this for a while, it's quicker to go in and change the text in a, uh, a Python script than drag blocks out from the um, from the block library. So now I've just very quickly changed it to spawn 50 bats instead of 100 chickens. So it's a really great um, a tool for transitioning from there we go and there's my 50 bats have just spawned in the the sky and they'll probably fly off quite um quite comfortably but as you can see there very quickly uh, and easily to switch between um between the blocks and the uh python you will notice as you're 
as your Python coding gets more advanced, there aren't necessarily aren't necessarily um, comparable block codes. But that's a, that's a simple uh, example there. So I'm just going to very quickly go through um, some of the ideas by age groups. So I had a look at the Australian curriculum. Um, and just to show you where you can bring in um, different ideas in different age groups, and then we'll go on and have a look at some of the artificial intelligence as well. So just even with really young students, you can follow instructions, place, uh, place blocks as you move around. In years three and four, students are introduced to, to algorithms, and you can do that really well here. Iteration in year five and six, and then when you go into... Um, into high school at year seven and eight, and you're looking at conditionals, and you're also looking at text-based uh, text programming, and then nine and 10, you're introducing variables and functions. And as you'll see um, very shortly, uh, variables and functions really help with the um, artificial intelligence, so you kind of get training your um, your agent to um, to do particular things. So I just, I just went that through that very quickly to show that it's something you can bring in at, at um, all ages. Um, I briefly mentioned Project Malmo, um, and I'm going to show you this because um, there's some really interesting stuff happening with Project Malmo. Um, I'll put a link to their site, and they've got a really nice um, Twitter feed, and they have competitions uh, about artificial intelligence and problem solving within um, within Minecraft. So let's just have a look at this. This is quite a few years ago, um, and the, the stuff that's that's happened since is uh, is really, really impressive. But it just gives you a feel for for why why um, you might want to explore artificial intelligence in Minecraft. Let's see if we can play this. Sorry, I'm going to try and share the sound in. That would make sense. Project Mimo is an experimentation platform for artificial intelligence research that is built on top of the game Minecraft. The vision of Project MIMO is that it will enable AI technology that can collaborate with humans. In the open world of Minecraft, there are endless possibilities for experimentation. It supports research on a range of approaches, such as reinforcement learning, deep learning, or symbolic AI. So researchers can compare and integrate different approaches to advance AI understanding, reasoning, learning, and communication. So here you can see how to get started. The agent is doing a very simple task, jumping and turning in this flat world. You don't have to be a skilled programmer to get started. Here we use an approach called reinforcement learning, which means that the agent is learning from trial and error about the consequences of its actions. Project MIMO provides all the building blocks for an infinite variety of tasks, starting from the simple ones that we show here, all the way up to the complexity of having agents that learn to communicate using natural language with human players. The virtual environment really lowers the barriers of entry to AI research, and overall it reduces the cost of running experiments. Project MIMO is the platform that we hope will enable the vision that AI agents and humans can solve tasks together. We really hope that Project MIMO will speed up innovation in AI research. You can try it today. It's available on GitHub. OK, so that looked pretty interesting. And um, you know, there's quite a lot to, uh, you know, it takes a little while to get to that level. But what's great is you can introduce the, um, the concepts involved in quite a, sim a simple way. So I want to very briefly show you this hour of code activity from um, 2019. A um, few years ago now, but uh, it's a really great introduction to um, coding within Minecraft, but also introducing those artificial intelligence um, concepts. So I'm going to just play this short video and then we'll go and try it live. Forests help ensure clean air, fresh water and sustain life for more than half the world's species. But many forests are threatened by climate change, loss of biodiversity, land degradation, and fires. The AI for Earth team at Microsoft uses artificial intelligence, or AI, to collect and analyze data about our planet to better protect it. For the Minecraft Hour of Code, we're going to protect a village and save a forest with the power of code. And learn about AI along the way. Okay, let's get started. 
First, make sure you download the Minecraft Education Edition app. If you are licensed for Minecraft Education Edition and have an Office 365 for Education account, sign in and navigate to the Hour of Code lesson in the library. If you don't have an account yet, that's okay. Go ahead and click Start Lesson. You'll land right in the 3D Minecraft world. And this is where the fun begins. Start by learning to move using the keyboard and mouse or touch commands. When you see an NPC or non-player character like this fella, right click to read what they have to say. This starts a tutorial. For help with reading in other languages, click on the book icon to open Immersive Reader. You'll then follow the path through eight different quests that will teach you the basics of coding while using AI to help prevent forest fires. Happy coding! Okay, so I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to try and show you that now. Uh, I've gone into Minecraft, um, and I'm going to show you this um, hour of code activity, and just so you can kind of see how it's how it's set up, and then we'll look at some of the um, curriculum resources for um, coding and particular um, artificial intelligence. So I am going to um, escape from this game. And I'm going to load my hour of code. So if you haven't used um, Minecraft before, as the video said, you just log on with your um, school email address. Uh, if you don't have a, a school email address or your school isn't licensed, you can, as the video suggested, play. Um, I think there's four or five um, different games or activities you can explore. So the hour of code one is here. And I'm going to play that. This is actually designed for students to work through individually. But I've done this with um, students, I think from year four to year uh, year eight. So sort of from, I can't even work out my, uh, how old people are from from, year, from sort of eight, eight, year, eight years old to um, 11 years old. Um, and I've had students working in, in groups uh, and it's worked really well as well. So the nice thing about this is it's self uh, it's self paced so students can work through the quests at their own um, at their own pace. And there's some really nice um, concepts. So hopefully this is going to load. Not too much longer and I can give you a, a quick um, overview. I, ha oh, I have a couple of questions if you're wanting. Yeah, do you want to ask those while we're going yeah. along? Yeah, we actually have a couple of questions about our worlds. So yes. can you create worlds that you can share with other educators. Um, so especially for team teaching or casual teachers. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll show you that in a moment. Any world that you create, um, you can take worlds that exist like this world and you can adapt it and you can save it. It's just a single file. It's called a dot MC world and you can share that via email, OneDrive, um, put it on Teams airdrop it to someone really simple. It's just one file that students and staff can share. Right, thank you. Was there another question there? Uh, and Janine, um, sorry, Leonie asks that she often has her students bringing their own devices and she has a little bit of trouble getting them to connect to each other's worlds. So do you have any tips around that? Yeah, there are a few. Um, there are a few tips I can send you when I send out the uh, resources. I'll send a link to a there's like a technical check sheet, but it may be depending on the device. If it's an iPad, there's a simple setting you can change that allows um, network access. And the other thing to check is that everyone has the latest version, because if someone's got one that's a couple of months out of date, um, you won't be able to connect the worlds together. Oh, but great. I'll send, send through some information. So this is the non-playing character that was talked about. Um, we're going to learn about AI encoding. Press C to start coding. Excellent. If I'm on a um, an iPad, you'll notice I've, I'm on a touch screen here. You can see the agent. When I touch the screen, the little agent appears in the center right. Um, and then I can just click on that. And then my uh, code builder appears and I can start writing coding. But as you can see here, it starts really simply. I'm going to open the gate. So what do I do? I click on open gate, start. And that's my first bit of coding done. 
and look, the gate opens. So I then go forward. There's my agent. There's my engineer, and I can ask her what I what to do next. This is the agent. You can program the agent like you did with the gate. Code the agent to move three steps forward. So I'll, I'll just do this very quickly. So you get the feel and then more and more um, details uh, are added and then you're actually getting the agent to our uh, to inspect different elements and and work out what needs to be maybe destroyed. So he's going to move forward by three. Yay, I completed the quest and then I can go forward. Oh, <laughs> the problem with me is I can't navigate. Students are are um, are much quicker at moving around. So now I'm going to move the uh, agent four spaces forward toward the dry brush and then analyze forward to collect the data. So we're working towards a place where the agent is going to go and ins inspect different types of plant and see whether they are potential um, fire hazards. So that's kind of, um, I'll leave that for you to go, go and explore, but at any time, there's a helper bot and you can reset questions and you can get help uh, as you go through. And there's kind of eight little tasks and um, it takes less than an hour for most most classes. And at the end, you're you're learning some really great um, skills. So I'm just going to leave that with you when you have completed. Within that environment, can you switch between the Python code and the block code? So in this one, um, in this one you can, uh, you sorry. In this one you can't. So in the um, the next two hour of codes, the 2020 and the 2021, you get the option when you start whether you want to do it in blocks or um, Python. But this one um, is just in um, blocks. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just escape from there and I'll just show you where the others can be found. Um, so if I log into Minecraft Education Edition and I go to the library, there are subject kits and within there, there's a whole lot of computer science ones. And there's a, a range of um, activities about um, artificial intelligence. So mapping terrain, ocean observations. These are all real world um, examples where the Minecraft team have worked with uh, scientists to actually and show how AI is used in the real world. So we can go and um, learn about sustainable farming, um, collecting data from a weather station, and then semi-supervised machine learning. So all of these uh, you can use in um, uh, block-based or, um, or Python, and the same with the 2020 hour of code and this year's one 20 or last year's one now 2021 was so much fun you had to go back in history and uh, and stop things going wrong um, and save and saving the the future of humanity <laughs> and that was really really fun activity um so there, there's a few computer science ones um, and what I want to do now is uh, show you this curriculum that I mentioned. My, the Microsoft team, as you can see, have put together activities for a lot of different subject areas. There's a whole lot of um, computer science. So if you are teaching Python um, in, a, um, in a high school, for example, you can actually go through and learn about um, different aspects in order. Um, and there's little worlds that you can go through um, with problems to solve before you get on to the next um, the next one. So definitely worth exploring. Um, and the great thing is there's a lesson plans with all of those. Um, just before I go in and show you the curriculum content, any other questions right now? Uh, with the Hour of Code tutorials, can you access them via the Hour of Code website or do you go through your Minecraft Education Edition. Yep. Platform. Either is the answer. Um, if you're in, already in Minecraft, you can go into um, Subject Kits, Computer Science, Hour of Code, and say launch this one from here, Create World. But a teacher can also grab that link and you can share that with students in an email or turn it into a QR code or put it on your um, learning management system or, or however you normally share links. So 
really flexible. You can do it via the Hour of Code website or in-game inside Minecraft Education Edition. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So very flexible. Um, now, this is very exciting what I'm going to show you now, and I'm going to share you the links uh, to find this information. But Microsoft have actually put together two great big um, sort of, it's about half a year's worth of lessons on computer science. And this one is really designed for sort of year seven to nine, I would say. Um, but this introduces all the core concepts of um, computer science. You can see down the left there, events, coordinates, variables, conditionals, functions, iteration, arrays, and then artificial intelligence that we're going to have a quick look at today. And what I really like about this is it's not just all in Minecraft. Um, you're introduced, for example, we're going to look at artificial intelligence, and it's first introduced by looking at um, playing noughts and crosses, for example, and how you might want to write some rules um, so that you can always win or not lose. And if we're looking at uh, variables, um, you can see there's a slap, clap, snap, unplugged activity. So there's unplugged activities you can do without needing to use the computer. And the nice thing about this is you get notes, questions to ask the students, different examples from different areas. We've got weather, sport, clothing, all introducing different variables. And then you actually go into um, Minecraft and start coding with variables. But what's great is there's screenshots so you can play along. And then down the bottom, you've got a teacher workbook with all of the solutions in. So all of the questions are answered. All of the coding is done for the teacher. There's a PowerPoint so you can share it in the class. And then there's a student workbook that students can work through. And um, so really great. Um, this is actually in a one notebook. I'll share the link with you so you can download your own copy of this. Um, but we'll have a quick look at the artificial intelligence one, seeing as that's why we're here today. So I really love this because it's open ended. Um, there's some preparation um, there. And then we we're introduced to artificial intelligence by um, talking about um, artificial intelligence from looking at robots beating students at chess, um, the deep IBM's deep blue computer, and then having a discussion around what um, artificial intelligence might entail, what um, problems might be solved with artificial intelligence, and then an unplugged paper activity. So the one I just mentioned, tic-tac-toe. So some really nice ideas there. And then you can go into um, Minecraft and it starts introducing um, the idea of um, in this example, we're going to code a, an agent to actually complete a maze. So we're going to start by doing that, and then you can build in more and more. So um, as you can see here, um, code a tree hunting agent. So you can actually write the code for a, an agent to go and explore and work out when he sees a tree, is he going to chop it down? It depends on the type of the tree. Um, and it introduces the different ways that uh, to think about artificial intelligence. And then uh, it gives some ideas of what, what um, how students might come up with their own um, programs. So can you um, can you send your agent off to find a temple, find a village, find a way out of a cave, build a road, but navigate the landscape? So be aware of um, water and, and caves and that sort of thing. So some really nice um, ideas there. And it also talks about um, pseudocode. So there's different ways that students can work through this uh, at their own pace. So you can see that's as kind of a six lesson um, activity. But let me just show you how kind of how simple it is. And um, you're also given the code. So students can take existing code and, and use it. So if I just show you the, uh, the teacher workbook, this is, the, this is the educator guide. So you get this uh, this nice guide that introduces all of the concepts. And as I said, you get given the answers and you also get given um, example code that you can just import and use straight away. So I'll show you what this looks like. Um, and I think you can see it's got a lot of uh, a lot of potential for student exploration and problem solving. So I'm going to go to um, in fact, what I'm going to do is actually create a brand new world. 
that is just uh, blocks of grass. So nice and empty. There's nothing in my world um, apart from, I think when you create blocks of grass, there's a few animals appear. So let's look out to see if there's maybe a chicken or maybe a cow. I always get excited if there's a donkey. What can you see? I can see a cow and a chicken. OK, so what I've done here is I'm press C to launch make code. There are other options, Tinker and Python notebooks. I have used those a little bit, but I generally use make code because I like switching between the blocks and the Python. So earlier today, I imported the code to create a maze. So what this is going to do is um, as I write um, as I write the code, this actually makes a, a block in front of me and then the, then the agent is actually going to try and um, make a. I'll, in fact, what I'll do is I'll show you um, and I'm actually going to give the agent some wood. And honestly, if you don't know how to give an agent some planks of wood, just ask a student and they can show you. But now I just need to write the word maze and then I'll explain the code that I've written. So if I write the word maze, the agent has um, has made a block and he's now. As you can see from the text, he's digging deeper. He's trying forward. Um, oops, that was a wall. Try right, try left. And the great thing here is if he makes a mistake or he goes over the same spot, he fills that in with a block of wood that I've given him. So I can actually see how he's building the maze. And then my next step is to actually program the maze, the agent to navigate the maze. So this might be something, depending on the age of the students, the students might write this code themselves. You might give them the code and let them change it, explore it. So we might want to deliberately go and sabotage the code and try and confuse the agent uh, and things like that. But he should be finished soon and find there's nowhere else for him to go. Um, and then we can actually go in and um, look at what's uh, a Pathfinder code, which will actually allow him to navigate this. Um, and so the nice thing here is you might you might want to do this physically with students or um, do it with a a b-bot or some other physical robot um, think about how you could navigate uh, a maze so if you always turn left will that get you through the maze if you come to a dead end you turn back to where you were um, always going left is that going to help it may do so we can see there he can't go any further he has now created a nice maze for us to uh, navigate you can obviously, when I send you the code, you can go back and, and have a look at that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say that's the start of the um, maze. And I'm actually going to go over here. And I want the agent to, let's say, come out here. And what I'm going to do is actually put, uh, it could be anything, but I'm going to use redstone. And what I'm going to do is program the agent to start over here, follow um, a set of rules until he's standing on the redstone and then he successfully completed the maze. So this is just the kind of thing that the students can, can explore themselves. So if I open up my code here, um, I've called it Pathfinder. And I'm actually going to, I've actually put these little commands here to get the uh, agent to the start of the, the maze. Oh, let me just bring that back up again. So forward, left, right, and teleport the player to me. But then we're very simple to start with. While not, agent detects redstone down. So if he's not got redstone directly underneath him, then he's going to turn left, move forward by one, and then so that builds and might take a little while, but he'll get to the um, he'll get to the end of the maze. But then you can build on that and make it shorter and he's learning as he goes. So let me just kind of bring him right back to the start and we'll see how clever he is. So I'm just going to teleport the agent to me. Oh, hello. And I'm going to have him uh, 
turn right. Oh, turn right. And turn right again. And maybe he's going to go forward. And again, forward. Oh, I wrote the wrong thing. Forward. And once more. And then I can set him off on the maze runner. OK. There we go. So now. He is just following my command, so he's turning left if he can, and if he can't, he's moving straight forward. And hopefully he'll get to, oh, it's quite, this is a pretty decent maze, but he's done that pretty quickly. And he's going to keep doing that while there is no redstone underneath him. Oh, if he were, if he were intelligent, he might, have, uh, he might have uh, looked to the other side as well. But I think he's going to get there in the end. It might just be a long way around. On. We can give him a cheer at the end if he's done it right. Hey! Yay. I programmed him to do a little dance at the end. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> so he, we added a little uh, we added a little jig at the end. So you can see there that you can build um, different content onto that. And as I showed you in the, uh, I'll show you the student book here. And um, so it gives you some example code, um, and then um, and you can whether you're doing that in. Um, in text based or block based, it gives you different ideas and then it gives you things to um, think about. So maybe mapping things out on paper first and um, and then breaking, you know, if we're going to go looking for for trees, breaking down the area into grids um, and, you know, just kind of how how you might um, program a robot generally. And then there's some activities, as I mentioned earlier, and it gives you an example with pseudocode on finding a temple and so on. So there's some really nice materials that have been um, created. There's that one I just showed you for um, so, sort of middle age, uh, not middle age students, middle school students from sort of seven to nine. And then there's also uh, a primary one, which actually is all about um, building a city using um, the agent. So you learn to code the agent and um, move the agent around, then you plan a city and build the city, you build parks, parks and recreation, you build a zoo, and then you power it all with wind power. So I'll send you the link so that you've got all these resources and all the all the PowerPoints and workbooks, and, and you should find lots of uh, exciting examples there. So um, that's really all I wanted to share with you today. I think I maybe had a couple of links. Uh, that's I've shown you that, so that's all good. Um, and I've demoed that. Uh, we'll share these slides with you so you've got these links, but these notebooks that contain all the curriculum resources, if you were to click on that link, it would just copy it into your OneDrive. So whether you use a school or um, personal OneDrive, uh, you can just log in and it will make a copy of that OneNote and share it with you. Um, there's also some... Um, useful resources that I'll just share before we um, before we wrap up. So there is a, an online teacher academy um, where you can go and learn about Minecraft and there's a whole lot of sections on coding um, and this is particularly for teachers that want to um, want to use Minecraft in their in their classroom. Um, there's also um, professional learning that we're running um, face to face via the, the web uh, and you can access that. And then I'm actually running, it's quite soon, but um, in at the end of March, I'm running it. Oh, at the end of March, I'm running a couple of sessions, uh, full day sessions on using computer science in uh, schools. Um, and we're also running that during the school holidays as well. So if you are interested in, um, in kind of diving deep into um, computer science, particularly from years three to eight, that's what we're focusing on in these um, in these areas uh, now. If you just email me, then I'll be able to um, get you onto that program or give you further details, agendas, and that sort of thing. So that's really all I wanted to share. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. Go to education.minecraft.net. Uh, at Playcraft Learn is the Minecraft Education Twitter. My education Twitter is Standout Ed, uh, and hopefully that's given you a few ideas about some of the possibilities. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Stephen. That was um, incredible. Uh, we, the examples were just really inspiring, and um, I love that 
lots of tips and things that you showed along the way, the interface connecting between the blocks to the Python, which is really nice for those transition years um, in the curriculum. And the project Malmo looks pretty impressive. Um, and as well as the curriculum guidebook just looks so valuable. And there's lots of ways I can imagine to connect those Minecraft uh, activities to real world situations where people are using artificial intelligence, like even just how you're saying, detecting fire issues or monitoring forests. Even your um, maze example could be a search and rescue, which is nice. Um, we, we've had a couple of questions pop up, if we can ask you those. Um, what's been your experience when hosting online coding sessions regarding um, how students are communicating with each other in the Minecraft world? So would you get them to chat in the world or do you use something like Discord or Teams? Yeah, I haven't done I haven't done a lot of um, online. So most of the, the, the work I've done with students has been in the classroom. And um, the ones that I have run online, we've um, we've done it in the game. Um, so just by pressing T or the, the chat box on an iPad, um, you can chat to people in the game. The nice thing about that is um, the transcript is recorded. So the teacher's got evidence of, of how the students have worked together um, and that sort of thing. So I normally suggest doing it uh, in game on in chat and um, and students are quite familiar with that. But obviously for more advanced things, um, you know, a, a chat, uh, you know, a, a voice based thing would probably be useful. <laughs> Typing is too Excellent. slow. Yeah. Uh, you're right. exactly. <laughs> Thanks for that question, Jing. That's a good one, how to get students communicating. Uh, we also have Leonie's ask, can you connect worlds to work with students from a, across different schools so that they're able to share worlds and collaborate using Minecraft? In uh, I, I love that question. Um, it's a little bit tricky. Um, generally, um, you can only play in the same office tenant. So what that means is if you if you belong to a um, Department of Education school in South Australia, you can play with a student in another Department of Education school in South Australia, but not with someone in New South Wales or someone in Canada or anywhere else. Similarly, Catholic schools can play with other Catholic schools, but uh, you can only play with people with the same sort of email domain. Oh, great. Uh, any other questions for Stephen? Feel free to drop them into the chat here. Um, just while you're um, thinking of any last questions, we'd just like to flag that we do have a free national lending library for schools funded through the Australian Government Department of Education, Skills and Employment, who have um, made this kind of professional learning available to you for free as well. Uh, so jump onto caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au and navigate to our lending library page. We've got some kits um, around artificial intelligence, augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, we'd also love your feedback on the session. Uh, so this helps us continue to seek funding so we can bring more free professional learning to teachers and schools. Uh, so I've just dropped that into the chat um, and we'll email it out. So even if you just took five minutes at the end of this session, it would be amazing. Um, any last questions coming through? So we've got lots and lots of thank yous there, Stephen. Um, awesome stuff. <laughs> and thank you to the agent as well. <laughs> um, it was brilliant to have you join us. Even while you're on um, a trip to Sydney, we're so lucky to have had you connect with us to be able to share your wisdom and all things Minecraft and artificial intelligence. Um, it's been amazing and thank you so much for your time. No worries at all. Absolute pleasure. And I'll send all those links out to Rebecca who can forward them on. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Bye. Thank you. Bye.